Dear viewers, welcome to yet another edition of Your Life, Your Money. When we talk about investment, everybody thinks about what could be the risk. People think, will I lose money? What are the types of risk my investment may go through? But not many people know about a risk called reinvestment risk, nor it is greatly discussed in any of the forums. Reinvestment risk is a silent killer. If you don't attend to it, it can become a deadly risk in case of some of the individuals. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about what is a reinvestment risk, where do you find it, how can you contract it, why you should be conscious about the reinvestment risk that could be there in your portfolio or you might expose yourself to. This is NRI Money Clinic for you and I'm Dr. Chandra Khan, but your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, first let us try to understand what is a reinvestment risk. Now let's say that you have got certain amount of money. Let's assume it's going to be a crore of rupee that you have. And you have parked it in a bank fixed deposit. It could be one year, three year, five year, ten year, whatever could be the duration. Now what happens when your FD matures? When the FD matures, if you have to reinvest it, you have to rebook the FD. But what could be the interest rate? You could be having an FD today which is giving you 7% rate of return. When your FD is mature, what will you do if the FD interest rate has fallen down to 4%? All these days you are very happy with that 7% rate of return. But now when you try to reinvest this or rebook this FD, it may be exposed to as little as 4%, 3%, 5%, whatever could be which is there at that point of time. This is a risk which is called the reinvestment risk. Many people are not conscious about it. You must know how reinvestment risk can come back and badly bite you. Let's take another example. Let's look at the stock market. How does the reinvestment risk works there? I'll go back to about two decades back, 2003, 2004, 2005, that period. Between 1993 to 2003, stock markets more or less remained flattish. It was moving in about 500,000 points, but somewhere between 4,000, 3,000, 3,500, it remained sluggish and it remained flattish. But what happened in 2004 was a commencement of bull market. The stock market, which was at about 3,500, 4,000, suddenly jumped to about 6,000. That means anybody who saw the stock market at 4,000 got habituated to that the stock market will be at 4,000 were surprised when the markets moved to 6,000. If stock market moved from 4,000 to 6,000, it means the markets give 50% return within a year's time. And that's surprising. Anybody could have thought, I got so much from the stock market. It's time that the market will collapse. So what I'll do is I'll sell it today, wait for the market to correct, then I will reinvest this money. Now when you sell it, you have a reinvestment risk. When will you enter? You thought that the market is going to collapse and you will be able to re-enter the market at a lower level. But market will not listen to you. You are expecting, but market may do something else. What happened subsequently? The market which was there at 6,000 started climbing up further, further, further and within next three years it went all the way from 6,000 to 10,000, 12,000, 18,000, 21,000. How do you feel? You are invested at 4,000. You walked out of the market at 6,000. Your friends, your colleagues, other participants of the markets are making money by staying invested. What is the natural thought that will come into your mind? Okay, it's bad luck. I will re-enter now. And that point could be at 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, 18,000, whatever it could be. What did you do? You exposed yourself for a reinvestment risk. By trying to become more intelligent than the market, you sold at 6,000, you entered at a level which is much higher. It is just not the story of 2003 or 2007. It keeps happening at every time in the stock market. There are few people who think themselves to be more intelligent than the market. They believing in 
timing the market they enter and exit the market without knowing the market whether it is going to correct or whether it is going to move up the madness of market is never known you cannot take this reinvestment risk it may work in your favor or it may not work in your favor both possibilities exist in this so this is called reinvestment risk on one side your yields may come down as i explained in case of fd if the interest rate fall down you have to reinvest this money at a lower rate of return in case of stock market you could be badly timing the market you think markets can come down and re-enter at a higher level which is not in your favor so this keeps happening all the time so when you are investing whenever you decide to book an fd or a fixed income instrument understand that there is a reinvestment risk uh, whenever you try to sell in the stock market it could be exiting a mutual fund scheme it could be closing your unit linked insurance plan it could be closing your pms account always remember that there is a reinvestment risk you cannot time the markets now let us look at who get affected with reinvestment risk there is specific set of people who get affected with reinvestment risk the first category of people who get badly affected with reinvestment risk are the retirees uh, what happens in case of retired person's life they feel i am a retired person i don't have a risk taking ability i'll park all my money in a bank fd and i keep rolling my fds i keep living out of the interest income that comes from the fixed deposits now let's say you are 60 years of age and you are getting a 7% interest yield and you have a certain amount of money which is coming as an income for you and your life revolves around for the expenses which is coming out of that fd now when you reinvest if the fd rates fall down to 4% what happens it's like your employer reducing your salary by 50% or 20 30% whatever it is now from the day you have retired till the day this reinvestment happened the prices have also moved up even though it appears like the interest rate is falling from 7% to 4% during a reinvestment risk the actual impact is much more than falling from 7 to 4 because the prices have also climbed up over the years the inflation also has taken a toll on your purchasing power the fixed deposit as all of us know will not beat inflation it will try to keep in line with inflation but when in future when the interest rates fall retirees get badly affected retirees have to be extremely conscious about this retirement problem or this problem of uh, reinvestment risk in your planning uh, it's just not that which bank is giving me the highest rate of uh, interest that has to be taken into account you should see how will i contract the ill effects of reinvestment risk or how i can negate it this thought should come you may think uh, i will invest in a senior citizen saving scheme or a ppf scheme or a pmvv scheme but even in those cases also when the interest rates fall they also will bring down their interest rate so none of these instruments are free of reinvestment risk there is another category of people who get badly bruised because of reinvestment risk are the intelligent people yes the intelligent people are the ones who get badly bruised because of reinvestment risk why because they think they are more intelligent than the market mark my words market is more intelligent than all of us none of us have a better intelligence than the market itself market has a mind of its own market is too good in its game to defeat each and everyone at one or the other point of time if you are a person who thinks that you can beat the market and you are more intelligent than the market you can be certain that you will be exposing yourself for reinvestment risk now that you know what is a reinvestment risk and which category of people get affected because of this now let us look at what can you do to conquer this reinvestment risk now let us look at the case of retirees or people who are planning for retirement people who are staring at retirement people who have crossed 45 years of age uh, what they have to do is it is just not that the fixed deposit that you have to invest your money you should have a portion of your money in the mutual fund or market related instrument that's a common knowledge 
what can I do in the fixed income space? One of the things that you can do is invest in annuity plans or guaranteed return insurance plan. They are far better than your fixed deposits. Why? Let me explain. An annuity product, otherwise popularly known as a pension product, guarantees you a rate of return which is guaranteed for life. If you put your money in an annuity product, a pension product, by the time you buy that particular product, either by way of paying a lump sum amount of money or contributing regularly to it, the interest rate what you are going to get, get fixed on the day of you signing on the contract. There afterwards, it will not change. Now let us say that the annuity rates are 7% today and you signed up for this annuity contract today. For rest of your life, it will not change from 7. It will remain 7 throughout your life. And if you opted for a joint life uh, pension for you and your wife, whoever survives over a period of time, they'll also get the same pension. If the interest rate climbs higher than 7%, then you will not get more than 7%. But that probability is remote. But if the interest rate falls below 7%, you are not paid anything less than 7%. So retirees must focus on this. At times, it appears like an uh, annuity product gives a shade lower than the bank fixed deposit, but it has a guarantee for life. A bank fixed deposit does not have a guarantee for life. There is one another advantage with the pension product. There are a lot of pension products which are available today in the marketplace. Most of the insurance companies cater to you. You don't have to pay all the money for pension plans on day one. Let us say that uh, you are 45 years old or 50 years old. Your retirement starts 10, 15 years later. You can opt to pay every year, but the interest rate get fixed today. You are not even paying for the future installment. By paying a token installment this year, you are making sure for the rest of your life, you are not getting affected because of falling interest rate of the future. What is the probability of interest rate falling in the future? I would say my guesstimate and my judgment and my assumption is that India will go through a falling interest rate regime like the rest of the world within a short span of time. And it is not going to be 10, 20 years later. In my assumption, probably in next 5 to 7 years, maximum 10 years, India will have a new normal interest rate of 3 to 4 percent. And if you are a high net worth individual or if you are a person who is the middle income or a higher middle income, it's perfectly common for you to have retirement corpuses in excess of 1 crore, 2 crore, 3 crore, which means even at 3, 4 percent of uh, interest that you get, you could be at a very high tax bracket. You get less and you part that money with government as taxes, you'll be hardly left with anything. So it is very essential that you take this risk with all the seriousness. Otherwise, uh, during your retirement days, for want of income, you will be compromising the capital that you have kept for retirement itself. But in case of pension plan, while it takes out the reinvestment risk, it leaves behind one another risk. That risk is that of taxation. The income you get as pension, uh, whether you have purchased the pension, government is giving the pension or whichever the form of pension, is treated as your income of the year. If your pension is lesser than the threshold level of income which is given every year for income tax, you will not suffer taxes. But most people, because the retirement corpus is quite high, will be having a taxable income uh, out of this interest income. So the pension takes out the reinvestment risk, whereas it leaves behind the taxation risk. The second product which can conquer the reinvestment risk is uh, guaranteed rate insurance plans. I had done detailed videos on this particular topic long back. I can give that uh, link here in the description box for you to uh, refer again. But some things have changed from the time I produced this video. When I produced this video a few months back, the plans were completely tax free. But in the recent budget, government has notified these plans that if you are contributing to these plans, up to 5 lakh rupee contribution per year per person, the maturity proceeds either as income or maturity, total maturity proceed is completely tax free. If you are paying more than 5 lakh, then it is treated as like your pension income. 
So that factor has to be kept in mind. Let's say that you invest in a guaranteed return insurance plan. What is a guaranteed return insurance plan? It's a very simple plan. It is nothing but a pension plan, but has an insurance component built around it. It's as simple as that. Because of this insurance component, and if your premiums are less than 5 lakh rupees per person per year, then the entire maturity proceeds are tax free. Like in case of a pension plan, when you get into the contract, how much money you are going to get, for how many years, how long you get it, when will you get the principal, are different permutations and combinations are available around that and that will also take out the reinvestment risk. And if you plan it very well, it takes out the taxation risk to a great, great extent. There is more about this guaranteed return insurance plan. I have done a lot of due diligence. I have done a lot of uh, taxation studies around that. I will produce a detailed video on this particular plan. In the coming weeks, probably you can expect this video, how you can make best use of guaranteed return insurance plan, either to negate your taxes or to minimize or defer your taxes. So that's a perfect possibility, which will take out the reinvestment risk. A third way you can take out the reinvestment risk is investing in rental real estate. When you have a rental real estate, rents are inflation proof. When inflation goes up, rents go up. When rents go up, the property rate goes up. But we have two problems in that. One, to buy a real estate, you need big amount of money. If you are retiring, and you have a retirement corpus, you can't take the risk of putting your money and going and buying a real estate. This is problem number one. You need large amount of money and you can't park your money in an illiquid asset uh, like a rental real estate. Likewise, the rental yield you get from the residential real estate is just 2%. Of course, it keeps rising. As times pass by, the rents keeps rising. There is no reinvestment risk there, but the yield itself is small. Recently, we have done multiple videos on uh, one product called the fractional commercial real estate. Now, fractional commercial real estate solves the problem of a residential real estate. To invest in fractional commercial real estate, one doesn't need to have too much of a money. The word fraction means it's a portion and the commercial means it is giving you a higher rent. So the rental yield in case of commercial real estate in India today is in the range of 8 to 9 percent and the rents keep rising every year or every three years that means it remains inflation proof if you are a retiree or if you are planning to design your cash flow using the rental income you don't have to commit a big chunk of money this fractional commercial real estate is available for you for as little as 25 lakhs let's say you got a the retirement corpus of one and a half crores you can put 25 lakhs into it a portion of the money rest of the money you can place it wherever you find comfortable but at least this portion will ensure that you have a good cash flow which will automatically adjust to inflation over a period of time so this also takes out the reinvestment risk to summarize three ways to conquer your reinvestment risk buy into a pension plan or the guaranteed return insurance plan or maybe rental real estate which could be residential ideally a fractional commercial real estate which will clear this reinvestment risk if you are a stock market investor how can you remove this reinvestment risk and if you think i am the most intelligent person first get the reality check there is no person on this earth who can be more intelligent than the market. If that reality strikes in all of us, we'll try to do things in a different way. Number one, don't try to time the market. It's not possible. Like Motilal Oswal says, select right. Your selection should be perfect. I Many a times I keep telling, you should get your process right, which is nothing but the selection, nothing but designing your portfolios. Get your portfolios right do the selection right after that sit tight let market go up let market come down if your process is right and that process will take care of everything then there is not going to be any reinvestment risk if you are invested in the market for creating a retirement corpus and that retirement is 5 10 15 20 30 years away what happens in the stock market in the interim has nothing to do with the final outcome so don't try to enter and get out of it try to be more intelligent than the market this is number one number two don't try to maximize your return the problem with investors is 
I want to have the highest return. That's not possible. It's not possible to get the highest return. Rather, the approach that you should follow is to optimize the return. What do you mean by optimize? The optimization is you should have an expectation of return and that should have a rationale and that should have a scientific approach. Now, if you look at the stock market performance, it is evident that the stock markets will give you somewhere between 3 to 6% over and above the bank rate. The bank rates are linked to inflation. If inflation rises, bank FD rate rises. If inflation falls, the bank FD rates fall. The stock markets will invariably give you 3 to 6% higher than the market rate. Depending on the quality of portfolio you build, you set up your expectation. If the bank rate is 5%, keep your expectation at 8 to 11%. If the bank rate is 8%, keep your expectation between 11 to 14%. Thereby, you know my portfolio should perform in this particular range. Don't try to put a figure 13, 14, 15, 20. That's unrealistic. Rather, make bank rate as a benchmark and keep an expectation how much more than the bank rate you should get and have a decent enough you know spectrum or uh, a range of performance to get it and based on that you design the portfolio it will never let you down it's just like you know driving in while driving you have a speedometer which goes all the way to 200 240 300 depending on the vehicle you have but you drive at what speed you drive between 80 to 120 140 depending on uh, what the rules and regulations of the road permit you to and that's what you should do even in the financial don't try to maximize don't try to over speed don't try to drive very slow go with an optimal speed and that will keep you very safe that will also help you to reach on time so there's no point in being more intelligent than the market just follow these steps and the reinvestment risk will never peep into your portfolios Finally, if you cannot comprehend any of these things and you want a professional help, engage the professional financial advisors. The question is, uh, when I say engage a professional advisor, there is a whole lot of people who go and comment, all advisors are bad. It can't be. It just can't be. There are black sheep in every profession. This profession will also have a, a black sheep, its quota of black sheep. So you should be careful. You should be able to analyze. You should be able to challenge what the planners or the advisors whom you go to, what they say is right or wrong. If you challenge it with your common sense, your common sense itself will give you an answer what these people are telling is right or wrong. If you are convinced on a common sense level, then you shouldn't be hesitating uh, to engage an advisor. When you engage an advisor, there are costs with it. Naturally, when you when you outsource something what you are supposed to do or when you are outsourcing what you cannot do, some amount of costing will come. Which is better, paying that small cost or doing lots of mistakes, feeling that I didn't pay an advisor, I did it myself and you create suboptimal returns or create disasters in your investment activity. So you can go for advisors. If any of you are looking for advisors help, to design your portfolios, take out different risks, to create optimum results, to stay away from the reinvestment risk, you can make best use of services provided by NRI Money Clinic. We have a team of experts on the ground who are ready to help you. Uh, our numbers are given here in the uh, description box. We have also provided a link in the description box. You can just click on that uh, link in the description box which takes you to the WhatsApp. Send us a message now and tell us what is that you are looking for. And one of our team members, our experts group will be ready to help you. If you are looking out for such advisory help, don't hesitate. Send that message now. Dear viewers, hope the video that I have done today helped you to understand the concepts pertaining to the reinvestment risk and the remedy that you can take to conquer this risk. If it did help you, do give me a thumbs up. If you are a person who is watching my channel for the first time, hit that subscribe button now and press the bell icon. Don't forget to share these videos with your near and dear ones and friends and relatives. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRA Money Clinic. I shall be back with you with yet another useful topic on your life, your money next Friday. Till then, stay safe. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.